Deadly Tarantula Grill coming to you from El Paso, Texas. <laughs> We're here with John with Feely's Clutch. And uh, yeah, so he's a very cool. He has his own channel and a TikTok. What else are you on? You're on Instagram, right? Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Facebook. I have my own group on there. Ooh. Um, What's your Facebook big. group? It's just John Feely. So okay. I try to keep everything as John Feely and then hashtag through Feely's Clutch so that if you cool, search cool. Feely's Clutch, that pops up. Very nice. So uh, this is a beautiful red-tailed boa, but she's actually not going to be the topic of our conversation <laughs> today. We're actually talking, so we visit like every day almost. And um, so we were actually talking about our channels and the growth and almost the lack of growth it feels like sometimes. And you kind of pointed out that there are sort of two styles of filming in the exotic animal world. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. So you have what we're kind of used to, which is the scientific side, the mm -hmm. breeder side, where we're really diving in deep onto our animals. and More of an educational right. type platform. Exactly. Then you have pet tubers who are, oh, I just got this new animal. What do you think about it? Or look at my 30,000 different animals in my collection, which it's, I don't know, to me, it's very difficult for me to watch, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like it. And those are the ones that really seem to blow up because it's always something new. It's very high energy, right. colorful, right. aesthetically pleasing. Lots of boobs. Yes, a lot of Lots times. Of yes or kind of like drama or clickbait almost. Exactly. They're definitely coming from more of an entertainment standpoint versus kind of an educational standpoint. Yeah. I see a lot of these people don't have very many animals. Some of them, some of them have massive collections, but a lot of them are very novice keepers. Like mm -hmm. pretty much they just started and they're not really offering care information and they don't even seem very informed about the animals that they're working with in my opinion so why do you think it is that their channels do so well because some of them just blow up quickly i think it's a energy and then if you look at kind of what they do on the side versus just the pet stuff it their energy one lets them dive in to more collaborations whereas mm. We as educators, we kind of we kind of close off into our own little sect because that's what we know. That's mm -hmm. where we're comfortable, and that's the hard thing is really expanding out your horizons and being able to collaborate with like famous people or being able to collaborate with like a prankster mm -hmm. or uh, someone that does daily vlogs or someone that does whatever genre it is. Really, they're able to take that step where. Predominantly, most of us are still finding a way to find that step. Right. I also suspect that some of them are more familiar. They're like more tech savvy and maybe mm -hmm. more familiar with the algorithms. Where when we started filming, we knew about animals and we knew nothing about filmography or, or YouTube or really even social media. And so what do you think about that? I, I think you're probably 100% correct on that. Like a lot of those people are younger millennials things like that that they have like a tech background or a graphic design background or they're just they're really tech savvy yeah. whereas we're jumping into it not that we're old but we're we're a little bit You're i'm young. sorry yes I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm not throwing her under the bus um, we as educators are more focused on the animals versus okay i have to have the best lighting i have right. to have the best camera i have to have the best right. this I have to understand every little niche in the algorithm, otherwise mm -hmm. it's not going to work. We're, we're just happy to put out the content and where we're at now is we really have to find a way to take that next step, like I was saying before, right. and become that algorithm understanding person. Yeah, we need, to, we need to adapt. So we were actually kind of talking about maybe doing some type of collaboration or group where we get together with other YouTubers and kind of... Uh, just have discussions about this. So what do you, what would you think about that? I freaking love it. I know, what are you doing crazy girl? I know myself, I'm in probably seven or eight different groups on just Facebook right mm -hmm. now that talk about YouTube and 
like the differences in how you do your hashtags or how you do your thumbnails and how all of it plays a part because your main three are like your thumbnails, your hashtags mm -hmm. and your, or your title, I'm sorry. Right. And it all has to tie in, otherwise you're not going to pop up on that search trend. Right. I just find it difficult how all these platforms are constantly changing their algorithms and their rules and it's just so frustrating. But maybe we could discuss that on one of your YouTube groups. That's, I think that's what they're... It's already established, yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Sounds good. So definitely comment below if you have any ideas for how we can grow. Yeah. And um, if you have a channel, if you want to talk about that, you can definitely, we'll link John's Facebook groups or you can always email me at deadlytarantulagirlayahoo.com. So thank you so much, beautiful lady, for guest starring. And thank you to John. You're amazing. Yes, thank you. Hope you guys like this one and we'll see you soon. Don't let me ever be this alone I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling Shouldn't be trusting me, I could be making it all up, you know